Hi guys, it's Eileen. Today is Tuesday, the 20th, I think, of, um, of October. I have another dark-ish kind of a spread for you guys. It is about uncovering um, unconscious content in our lives. Uh, this one is specifically um, developed for people who are womb twin survivors. My husband's one and I have a friend who is one as well. We are assuming. They're, these people are over 50 years old and so it's a bit harder for them to have like uh, real data about uh, the, the state of the pregnancies of their mothers. But, um, you know, personality-wise, they fit the bill completely. These people together, <laughs> they could write the book about what it's like to... Um, and since they are not doing it because they're busy at the office, both of them, it's me doing it. I have a bit of a hard time getting this video filmed. It's the fourth attempt, I think, or the fifth. The cards that my husband drew in his Sasarabito deck not these, uh, have been on the table uh, for uh, two days. And then after that, I've had these cards, the same ones, but in the Marseille, on the table for a day and a half. And I don't seem to be able to get my brain into the right kind of gear. However, I have made a computer file that has the questions, the spread questions, and a little bit of intro and outro to that. And what my plan is at this point is to just go and read this stuff out to you. It'll be a bit more boring, but I can also intermittently show you cards that my husband had actually in his drawer right there. I find it fascinating, and I will also get into that in a next uh, session that will look more or less the same as this one, I think, because my dark inner child spread that I did last week it kind of was the ancestor spread to this one where the dark inner child has to do with uh, mostly stuff about ourselves and our behavior and all that that's unpopular to either think of for yourself or to even share about because that's why it's dark it is uh, tendencies that are, you know, that consider to be self-serving or not altruistic enough or not politically correct enough or all those kinds of things. And I got at that um, kind of an approach because I have been involved with um, all sorts of um, behavior issues for myself and also being on the receiving end of those types of behaviors where that stuff is actually this negative, narcissistic, if you want to call it that, stuff is actually really close underneath the surface and it determines people's behavior all the time. So this is a kind of a situation where in both cases, in the twin thing and in the dark child thing, whether you're talking about the spreads or in actual life, this is what happens. There is a shadowy world that is so close to the surface that it actually makes a lot of stuff happen and makes a lot of... It makes for a lot of difficulties, a lot of communication difficulties and so on and so forth. So, um, the the... The, the questions in both spreads, and I've got a third one actually that has slightly bit more of a slightly bit more distance, you know. You could do that one after you've done either of these two or possibly both, or just, you know, shoved your cards around a bit for this kind of in this kind of a way, because it takes a bit of getting used to. It isn't um downplaying the at least that's how I feel. That's how I, I, I want these spreads to work. I want them to allow us to bring out the voices inside that are normally silenced. So yeah, so there you go. So the glasses go off because then I can, can read my thing here. I have actually three types of questions in my whole spread. There's 11 questions. So if you haven't got a drink yet, that this may be the time for you to go and make one. Uh, but as I 
introduce my thing here. In this uh, particular uh, spread, you have three settings. There's a setting that's number A that has a one card answer a number B that has two card answer for a single perspective. So you get like a double whammy, uh, double card answer for one thing. OK, and a, a C position or C type where there's a two card answer, but it shows two different perspectives. So it refers in that case to the conscious, uh, you know, me doing my thing and feeling all good about it or maybe not, as just is the case, maybe. And then there's the unconscious voice that you are giving room to show you a card, you know, so that kind of a thing. Um, so in this particular twin, womb twin survivor spread, it's coming out as the twin side, basically the twin. Uh, most people who are actual womb twin survivors, I, in my experience, they don't know that they are. And if they come in contact with this type of intelligence, this type of information, uh, it takes a bit of pushing and nudging from several sides for them to become, to make themselves available to the perspective that, hey, this might be me, you know, this might really be my deal in life. And wow. And then all of a sudden the dominoes are toppling over, you know, one after the other. It's like... OK, I check, 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 check all these uh, characteristics and oops, you know, <laughs> there's a massive oops going in that person's life and in people's lives around them, you know, because finally there's an answer to a whole lot of basically questions that were all the time uh, pushed away and uh, just the, the 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 things the things that were painful and difficult were assumed to be out of range in a way so this is i'm explain okay so i have the questions right here i'm going to dive headlong into the questions and give you my husband's cards as they come up number one how does my conscious self misunderstand my twin self so my conscious, normal, everyday way of looking at things completely blind is, is blindsided in its way of getting at this other part of me, right? I'm pre pretending, I'm not a, a womb twin survivor myself, but I'm pretending to be the querent here, okay? The card that came out for my husband was the Five of Swords, okay? And we it took a bit of back and forth thinking, uh, for us to figure this out but what I figured out in the end was that this five of swords means in this case that what his position is and still is to this day is that he has to choose between the twin thing and the normal thing in his life he, he cannot do both which is what he is his life is both these vibrations and these wavelengths and these types of content and these types of emotions and the, all of it you know it's not a matter of but it's the idea that he's got and the five really does that it took me a bit of doing to get that that but once i <laughs> this is a re already a very nice card to to open up this whole thing in what's going on here question number two numero due what are my twin self's needs that are ignored or suppressed? He gets two cards because there's two cards conjoined. This is a position of the B type where we have two cards that are together, forming a big cloud here uh, to show the twin self's needs. OK, that are suppressed and or ignored or suppressed or whatever, you know, the tower and the knight, is it? Yes, of wands. So what this shows, I won't go into all the cards, into a lot of detail, but just for to, to, for you to get a hang of the different approaches in with these A's and B's and things. The twin self actually longs for the destruction of the upper world, is what comes to my mind with the tower. So it can become this adventurous hero that it needs to be 
For example, together, these two cards really together show that kind of a need. If you get an Ace of Cups and a Four of Wands here, that's a different story. But you see what you see my drift. What the needs are is shown 100% in these two cards. Next question. Number three. How do I consciously, commonly work against or help to suppress my twin self's needs? Number one part of this question. And number two part of the same question. How does this affect my twin self? I have two cards for that. So what do I normally do to, uh, to suppress the whole thing? Six of Swords. What does it feel like for my twin self? Nine of Swords. I'm leaving this up to you, Tara, guys, to know what this is on about. Going on. How does my dark inner child... So that is like the... Uh, sitting right next to the twin self and slightly more conscious, I think, for many people than the twin part. Uh, the dark inner child, how does he resent the absence of the real twin? So how does he feel very bad and how does he how does he resent the real twin brother or sister's absence? And then how does that affect affect them? Two positions, two separate positions. First one, how does it resent? So my intuition, my in unconscious identity, basically, resents my loss of my brother, Ace of Cups. And it affects me, Four of Wands. So the Four of Wands card took a bit of doing. I had to go to the astrological settings for that card. If I remember correctly, it had to do, it was Venus in Aries, which I interpret as having very strong instinctual needs and very obvious instinctual needs also, and needs that need to be obeyed. Aries, Venus in Aries. I think you're catching my drift here. Moving on. Number five, what about my normal life? Hurts my twin self most of all. One card, the temperance card. <laughs> Not explaining that one. How does number six, this hurt, come out, express itself, or make itself known? The star. Knowing that my husband is a poet and a poem writer and he can just go off into a very um, very poetic uh, kind of a off planet. He goes off planet. That's what he does. How, how appropriate to have a star card for that. Number seven. And it's another two-part dealio here. How do I consistently misinterpret, interpret or reinterpret the messages of the previous question. So what do I do messing around with my um, falling off the planet? He gets the Four of Swords and the Priest, the, hi the Pope, the Hierophant. I'm leaving that up to you guys. Another interesting one, number eight, how do I how is my personal past, my upbringing, my personal history responsible for me misunderstanding my twin needs? So me thinking along the me like that instead of being right where it is, you know, being in contact with it, basically. You could also say here, how is my personal past responsible for disconnecting me from my twin needs? It's another neat one, I think. We got the Ten of Cups. It's another card that took a bit of, you know, because you don't use reversals, because that would be too, that would be too easy. I don't know. I don't think that's too easy necessarily, but you have to trust for the card to show. I think you can have a dark meaning for each card, which is what I've been working with and working on for the past months myself. And I like that. I like working that way. The personal past or upbringing or personal history, in my husband's case, 
in the Ten of Cups, what the, the brainwave that we had was basically that uh, in his past, in his upbringing, um, the idea was, the, the idea that people subscribed to was that everybody was the same. And it was supposed to come out as everybody is equal. This the Ten of Cups is a very social card. Very, it's a, the to me certainly it's the ultimate card of groups of people, group consciousness, and that kind of a thing. So his for him the fact that he ignores sometimes still uh, his twin needs, you know, his inner twin, his inner twin self, uh, what that needs is that he still thinks he's the same as everybody else. He just do jumps to that conclusion and doesn't come off it again. So there you go. Uh, numbers 9, 10 and 11 are actually the same qu spread questions that I use also for the other two things, the dark child thing and the other one, because I find them to be really helpful to also bring it kind of to a conclusion. There's a card... Um, that has to do, let me sink here, doo, 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 doo. I, apparently this is another item where I have two cards, unconscious common ground between myself parts. Okay, so it looks like my file is still incomplete on my piece of paper here because I have another question. Um, these cards actually apply to the question, how do we prevent change or transformation from happening? That card is missing from my printout here, so I have to put that back in. And it's the Fool and the, sorry, Strength card. The last three, now we're seriously getting to the last three, are questions. What is the unconscious common ground between my twin self and I? The High Priestess. Oh, lovely. The forecast cards. <laughs> the kind of, this is why I do tarot. The Eight of Swords and the Eight of Wands. You, 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 sort, you, you look at that. So forecast, right? It's what's going to, how it's going to develop from this point on outward. And there's a love card. That's the last uh, card that's kind of, they're always attached to this, to this uh, kind of a spread here, where I'm putting my glasses on now because I can, I can see myself at least. Hi, self, <laughs> whichever side of the self it is. Um, the love card is like a, sort of a nugget of truth that you can, that you have to sort of sink into to get at the point of it all in a way and it's something that you also have in common with this side that is that has been uh, that's just unpopular and not seen in society most of the time we have the seven of swords the interesting bit about this one is that the seven of swords astrological configuration is the moon in aquarius which is my husband's moon so he gets his moon his his moon as a love card and um, my interpretation for that it's a Dutch phrase that I use but it, I wouldn't say know how to say that in English it's uh, more or less more or less like you have to look after look out for yourself you you have to look out for yourself you just have to realize that what you need inside it's always one thing really to connect, to feel better, to be healthy, to be, to have a, to store strength or not strength in that sense, but strength in the sense of being able to tap into energies that you need, um, to find, you know, the awareness that you need also. It's a changing process. So I hope this is some kind of an illustration. Sorry for the mess. I seem to, like I said, I seem to have a really hard time uh, doing this talk about this spread here. I will put the spread questions in the description as per the norm. And that's not so hard now once that I've got it all sorted out. But it's just, 
it's just um, I've been going through a lot of changes myself very recently and this is just a bit much and it's different and I have to go really deep into something that's actually a bit too deep for me at this moment but I think I've managed to talk it all the way to, through to the end what with him having taken his own notes and my own uh, scribbles on my own uh, uh, printout here I think I can manage and uh, I think I hope you can manage as well I yeah it's for a specific group of people it's not really all that particularly useful for uh, for just anybody this kind of a spread uh, I still think um, if you suspect your partner or a good friend or maybe a parent to be this uh, kind of a person you know where it seems the 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 most the strongest trait and characteristic of a womb twin survivor is that they are always lonesome and it's a level of aloneness that is just it once you start uh becoming more sensitive to that and interacting with it it it's just an endless pain really and um it's really hard to live with it's also really hard to live with as a as a partner because um nothing you ever do makes the slightest difference you know and it's a it's an issue it's quite a it's quite a it's a massive challenge i think for quite a number of people i think one in 10 human beings is a womb twin survivor so on that bombshell i'm going to leave this as is i hope you still found this interesting to watch anyway even if it doesn't uh, ring any bells for you i'm just uh, putting it out on the internet right away thank you for watching and see you very soon okay see you then bye bye